Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriveSuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about the two main inventory cost drivers. This is a subject matter that I covered for the Institute of Supply Chain Management back in October 2011 for their Inside Supply Chain Management publication. Uh, we talked about um, how to run a successful Dell push-pull, but inside we covered these two main inventory cost drivers. So let's get started. The first is uh, carrying costs, okay? Carrying costs sometimes referred to as uh, the holding cost of inventory. This pertains to the cost of holding inventory without sales. The first to make our list is the cost of financing. Okay? Now, your company finances its inventory with outside financing. What we're interested in here is your daily cost of capital or your daily cost of money. So let's say your interest rate is 5%. We're going to take that and divide it by 365 days in a year. It's going to give us a 0.0137% interest rate per day for every day we hold inventory without sales. If you wanted to take it a step further, you could multiply this by the cost of goods sold, COGS, and then multiply that daily cost by uh, the number of days you hold inventory without sales. Okay? So this is your, this is your cost of financing as part of your carrying cost of inventory. Okay? The second thing we're going to look at, the second portion of these costs pertains to damage. Inventory damage. Okay? The longer you hold inventory, the more likely it is that it's going to become damaged. Then you've got issues with obsolescence. Okay? The longer you hold inventory, the more likely it's going to be harder for your sales to sell it, and the more likely your market's going to push away and not want the product offered. Then you look at things like per unit freight costs or freight costs in general. Okay, per unit freight costs and freight costs, okay? So, you know, how much does it cost for you to get parts into your warehouse? That's a cost of carrying costs because you hold it longer and you have to cover that as part of your financing as well, okay? And then the last one, let's say, is warehousing costs. And under the warehousing costs, you could put, you know, uh, electricity, okay? You could put, uh, you could put rent, you could put overtime, you know, counting. You can put all kinds of different things under it. But basically, your carrying costs pertain to A, your cost of financing, daily cost of capital, B, cost of damage, C, cost of obsolescence, D, per unit freight costs on incoming parts, and E, warehousing costs. Those are general carrying costs of inventory. Where most companies get confused is the second portion, okay? And this pertains to lost sales, okay? And this is lost sales because your inventory counts were low. Most companies don't even think this is a cost of inventory, but it is, and I'll show you how. The first thing we're going to look at is any time you lose sales because you don't have inventory, what do you lose? Well, lost sales equals lost gross profit, okay? And if you can apply a dollar value to that loss, then you have defined one portion of the lost sales cost of inventory portion, okay? So lost sales equals lost gross profit. Now here's the other one. Let me just ask you what you guys do, and I want you to think about this. What do you do when you don't have the inventory you need, you have a material shortage or a finished goods shortage, and you've got a customer that's extremely important? What do you do? I guarantee you the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get on the phone with your, with your supplier and you're going to ask him to rush you parts as soon as possible. So you're going to cover an expedite fee. Okay? So your, your supplier is going to say, hey, yeah, listen, I'll help you. But, you know, in order to help you, you've got to jump ahead of somebody else. I'm going to have to charge you for it. So let's say you're able to avoid that. You're going to pay a high freight cost to get parts into your warehouse. Okay? You're going to have to rush parts into your warehouse. That's guaranteed to cost you money. Okay? Now, once those parts get into your warehouse, if you're a manufacturer, you're going to have additional manufacturing costs. Okay? More money. Even if you're not a manufacturer, you're going to have overtime pertaining to uh, receiving and packaging. Okay? That's going to be more money. Now, if you're really late, if you're really in trouble, and you got a really upset customer that you can't afford to lose, you're going to have to pay freight again to get parts out to them again. 
Okay, so you're going to pay freight once more, and you're going to incur more costs. Okay, so you've actually got two freight costs, the freight double whammy, if you want to call it. Now, did keeping your inventory levels low save you money? Of course it didn't. Okay, the first thing you encountered was lost sales. You lost gross profit. Now you want to retain the customer. Let's say you avoid that lost sales. You want to retain the customer. You're probably going to pay an expedite fee to get parts in from your supplier. Guaranteed, you're going to pay high freight costs to rush those parts into your warehouse. If you're a manufacturer, you're going to include manufacturing costs, additional manufacturing costs, and overtime. It's going to cost you time and a half. Okay? E, you know, you're going to have to pay, whether you're a manufacturer or not, someone to receive and package and inspect QC time. Okay? And then finally, you're going to have to rush those parts out to your customer on your account. Carrying costs of inventory are easy to understand. Lost sales costs of inventory are definite cost drivers of inventory, and you must understand them. One cost pertains to having too much inventory and not enough sales. The other one pertains to having, you know, not enough, uh, not enough inventory and too much demand. Okay? It's not easy to find the happy medium between these two things, but if you only track one cost driver and ignore the other, you're always going to be on the assumption that low inventory equals savings, and it just doesn't. So that's it, inventory carrying costs, the cost to carry inventory, and the cost of lost sales because inventory isn't available. That's it. Take care. Ian Johnson, DriveSuccess.com. Bye-bye.